All right, guys, welcome to another episode of The Build. My name is Cody Groom, and today we have the original M3. If you're not familiar with the E30 M3 story, basically BMW had to make 5,000 units and actually sell these 5,000 units in order to compete in a race. The E30 M3 was basically light and fast. So it had a two liter four cylinder and it only made 195 horsepower. Now by today's standards, that seems slow and it is, it's slow for today's era. But at the time it was a competitive car. The E30 went on to win a bunch of races and you can thank the E30 for the E36, the E46, E92 and so on. But anyways, enough of me talking, let's check out the car. My name's Cody Groom. I spend my time showing you guys amazing cars and the stories behind them. Damn. It's about the people, places, and of course, cars. Welcome to The Build. I got into cars probably in 93, 94. You know, had an old school Benz, then got into an M3. It was a 95 M3. As soon as I graduated college, I opened up a shop called DTM Auto House. I opened that in 2000 and I sold it in 2004. I specialized in BMWs, Audis, and Volkswagens. I myself had the M3, the modified Audi TT, A4, then you know, other various cars since then. A friend of mine in, back in high school, he had an old school bubble Civic and he was modifying it. I didn't know what he was doing. I was like, what do you, why is this thing so low? Why is it banging on speed bumps? But he, you know, I could see the passion that he had to modifying it and trying to be different. Uh, so I guess that's kind of where I, my, my first exposure to modifying. This particular car, I stumbled upon it. You know, I, I had had the 95 M3, I had an E60 five series, then I had an F31 wagon. So after I sold all those cars, I, you know, I was thinking about getting an older car, much older than anything I've had before. So I was talking to a friend of mine, Brian from Rotiform. He was telling me that he had an E30 M3 just sitting that he was going to take on as a project, but he decided not to. So next thing you know, I, I, I got this car sight unseen. I uh, asked a friend, Igor, kind of just eyeball it, see if the car is in good shape and all. Checked it out, said, you know, it needs some work, but it's, it should be fine. So the suspension was work, worked on over there. Everything else was stripped out. There was one seat. It was kind of a mess. I'd gotten it towed back to RMD Garage. I think by this time it was maybe like July and decided, you know, hey, why don't we just bring this to SEMA? So SEMA being, you know, end of October, didn't have much time. So got all the body kit pieces together, saw some stuff missing. It didn't have the actual Evo wing. So I had a carbon fiber one made to obviously fit that whole Evo 2 look. The paint was redone over at RMD Garage as well. Interior though, that was pretty much the main issue. There was no interior, so had to get that redone. With Stan Z30, one of the first things that caught my eye was the color combinations. I always think that it's super cool in a car when you can actually take a two-tone look and just make it clean and simple. So every little part of the car has that look, but it's not over the top at all. I, I really don't think, he didn't do like every little thing, but he did just the right things to where the car is clean and concise without having so many details that it doesn't look good. The car I had before the F31, that was the first time I had done like, you know, a little pinstripe on it. So I kind of thought, you know, well, if I'm gonna do another one, I'm gonna try to keep that theme. You know, like I'm gonna, you know, that signature, like oh, I'm gonna add a pinstripe to it. Talked to my buddy John Sabal about kind of laying out what the overall look would be with the stripe and everything. And so he came up with that. We called the car Crazy 88. A logo was created. And then we kind of just added that to the back of the car. I like gold. 
So I just wanted to incorporate that in some way. Um, I had incorporated gold in one of my other motorcycles. So I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe black and gold would be nice for this one. Uh, the interior, you know, I obviously took cues from Singer, you know, with what they do with the high-end leather materials, the rivets inside, the, the vents, the air vents for the seats. Uh, RS door pulls. So a lot of that, you know, for me, interiors are what make the car for me. You know, I mean, I'm the one that's driving in it. I'm not floating outside the car looking at how cool my body kit is. I wanted to make sure that if I'm in the car, that everything around me is, is comfortable to me. You know, that feels like it's a part of me as far as it being you know, high end materials, just overall clean look. So as I mentioned before, the, when I got the car, the interior was pretty much non-existent. Uh, luckily I had all the door cards, I believe. I might've been missing one door card. I had the full back seat. There was no front seats had the dash, had the center console. But other than that, there was no carpet. The guys at RMD, they're in-house painters, interior. So they actually rewrapped the, the dash in leather and then the center console was wrapped in leather, black leather. So there's a lot of, there's a ton of OEM pieces in this car. I would still say as modified as it is, there are still mo more OEM parts in this car than there are modified parts. And you have Recaro Sportster CSs in the front, but in the rear, you actually have an OEM back seat, which is cool because the OEM back seat had this like, this bolstering like you were gonna take it on the track with four people in it. And it, it's a cool little touch to see that OEM piece still there, but just redone for his car. The seats, uh, like you mentioned, the back seats were still original, so I had those rewrapped, but added the air vents to them. I had one seat that wasn't even an original seat, so I had, two Recaro CS Sportsters already for my other car. And I just reupholstered that to kind of, again, fit the overall look and feel for the whole thing. My friend Willie from Nostalgic Grains out in New York, he's known for making wild shift knobs using different resins and woods. And I was like, do you have anything that has black and some gold in it? He's like, I have just the right pieces for you. I'll bring it to you, to SEMA. He came to SEMA bringing one of his other cars to display and he forgot the shift knob and the e-brake handle. I was like, he's like, don't worry, I'm gonna have it overnighted. And sure enough, he got it and we put it in, I think, Tuesday morning of the SEMA show. I mean, it really set off the interior because if I just had the plain black leather plastic uh, e-brake handle and regular shift knob, it just kind of like, feel kind of let down. So I think that th those pieces really elevated the overall look and feel. The exterior, you know, I, I wanted to just keep it simple, like M3, I wasn't gonna change anything. I wasn't gonna put on a weird wide body kit on it. It's already got the wider box fenders. Kept it with the Evo 2 look, so it's more of aggressive front lip. The wing, of course, the side skirts. So just kept it that way. The only thing this different is probably the mirrors, which are like the DTM cut mirrors. So those are carbon as well. So kept with the carbon accent themes. Wheel-wise, I did have another set of wheels from Rotoform. I was always gonna work with Rotoform since obviously I got the car from Brian. When I debuted this car at the SEMA show in 2017, I had some five-spoke rock ROC Rotoforms. And that also had gold kind of accents to it, gold rivets. I had that for a little bit. It was also on air at the time. Since then though, I pulled the air out, uh, went with more of a, I went with a coilover setup. So I went with the AST suspension, crafted suspension, did custom shorter struts uh, because they weren't low enough. In doing so, I also changed the wheels. These were designed by John Savall and myself. He's asked me like, well, what are you looking for? I told him, I, you know, I wanted a mesh. I love turbo fans, but you know, me, I, I put Brembo's on it. I'm not gonna cover the Brembo's up. So I'm like, well, what, what kind of a turbo fan can we do that still shows the brakes? So, you know, after kind of going some back and forth, we came up with this design. Some of the stuff that John designed, the Rotoform wasn't capable of doing. So we kind of compromised here and there, but ultimately I think it came out pretty much the way we wanted it. And so it's a turbo fan look, but it is actually the face. It's not a removable cover and there's another wheel behind it. When I got the car, again, I didn't drive it much. The first time I ever drove the car was when it was dropped off at a shop in Vegas and I rolled it in the scene. That was the first time I had ever driven the car. Only until I, I took it out for a, a photo shoot that I realized that the engine was starting to cause some issues. I talked to a buddy over at 2002 Garage Works, 
the recommendation was, look, if we try to keep putting band-aids on this thing, it's not like I can just order up one of these motors. Either I was going to rebuild this thing and keep it as original as possible or do an engine swap. I could have rebuilt the whole thing, uh, bumped it up a little bit, but I just didn't want to, I don't know, risk an original S14 motor. Did everything original. The only thing that's been changed out is just some JE pistons, which are the same, still the same spec as OE. The exhaust is a boreless exhaust system, so there was no exhaust in the car really before, and they probably don't want me to say, but there is a full kit, full exhaust system that's not sold by them, uh, that's on this car, so. For the most part, I just can't have a stock car. You know, like I said, ever since that Civic, right? That my, my buddy had, you know, it's seeing, having it be different, having it be your own that that you've done. I mean, if you're driving down the street and you see the exact same car, if you're buying it as a point A to point B car, who cares? But if you bought it because like, oh, I love this car, this is a badass car, and like three of them right next to you, the exact same thing, you're like, oh man, that's kind of, you know, that's not cool. So everybody starts to do their own thing, whether it's just tinting windows to just changing wheels out. I mean, like I said, I've had this for like maybe a little over three years. I've only really had it in my possession, maybe like seven months. Now that I have it back, I, I'm able to appreciate all the different things. The interior for sure is something that I, I love. It, again, it's, I'm a, I'm a big fan of nice interiors. Um, Cause again, that's where you spend your time. I think that, the wheels, I think just because I was able to design it with a, a good friend of mine. So that's kind of like an accomplishment in the sense that, oh, wow, I had this, this cool wheel designed. And, you know, I think it's, it turned out really well. So I think those are the main pieces of this that uh, I'm really fond of.